video, we will learn about the inline function. Before that, we have to look on what is user defined function. That is the function defined by the user and it is the addition that is the function name and these are the arguments or these are the parameters and this is the return type of the output okay return type of the output which is integer format and this is the function name right and it can be according to our own like okay here we can write it as add or something that we are giving the name and here we are giving it as addition okay now about in the main function we can see that the two numbers are there uh, we have to give it uh, to this uh, in order to add two numbers and the result is stored in add and we can see that here the function is called by that add that is the result add equal to just calling the function that is addition num1 num2 that means the automatically the control will be flowed to what the function definition where the addition is declared as return a plus b so how a function is declared the return type function name, parameters and body of the function. Now, what is this inline function means? Inline function which is used to solve some complicated problems, right? Okay, so that is the use of in, uh, inline function. Okay, for example, inline return type. So, it can be declared as inline return type and function, function name and what parameters, okay? Now, that means our normal function declaration is from this step, right? This step. So, in addition to this, we have to add the word keyword inline. You know what is keyword, right? There are some words which have specified meaning in C++, which is this keyword. And examples of keywords are for, while, do, while, inline, int, care, float, right? So, the inline return type of the output function name parameters. So, this is uh, how uh, we declare the inline function. And what is the purpose of inline function? So, we already learned in this previous thing that when a function is called like here, what will happen? The program control will be automatically flowing when this function is called. The program control will automatically check where this function is defined. And here the function is defined. That is whatever inside these parameters it get added and the output is returned. Right. So, here what will happen? The number 1 will be copied to here, number 2 will be copied to here and the result will be stored in the add operation and we have to see this add and then return 0. But in the case of inline function, what will happen is this, that is what will happen? The compiler replaces the function called with the corresponding function code. That is, here there will be no control transfer of course. There will be no any control transfer like we learned previously. Here the thing is like this. For example, here we have to multiply two numbers. And this is a function that is declared inline. Function name is float is the return type of the function. And mul, mul, multiplication. Instead of this, we are writing it as mul. And this is the function name. mul is the function name. And these are the arguments. And here we are writing it as return x star y. Okay, return x star for that is whatever the parameters inside this function and it is get multiplied. But we know that in the main function there will be something called as mul ab. And here a is given this value, b is given this value. That means here the function is calling, right, mul a comma b. And here we can't see any something like a star b. But what will happen is that when the function is called like this, this thing will be, this code will be copied here. This will be mul ab will be replaced by this code. Enter this code. That means the copied. Okay. So, these codes are copied or replaced by this section. Here there is no flow of control of course. And it is simply uh, or it has much less complicated than the previous uh, functions okay without using the inline function here we can see that in the line itself the program code is copied and here instead of mul ab these things are copied then what will happen automatically this instead of this we can write it as return x star y and the multiplication is occurring and there is no any program control transfer of course now about the default argument okay default arguments so, default arguments. What is this default arguments means? You know, the word default means what? As such, right? That means, you know, what is arguments? 
arguments means what whatever inside this function in this bracket which is passed or which is multiplied which is operator so these are the arguments right and c++ have some set of default arguments here okay when there is uh, when we are not giving any values uh, also then also there are some values already defined okay the compiler looks at the prototype to see how many arguments a function uses and alert the program for possible default value that means when some values are not seen there there will be some default values okay and this compiler will automatically check this default value let us consider an example here we can see that float amount that is this is a function return type function name is the amount and here there are three arguments like float, float principal in period and float rate equal to 0.15 here this is the default set that is the rate is default set by default set as 0.15 okay so if we are calling if we are calling like this that is value equal to amount 5007 that means what will happen the principal this is the amount right this is the function name and when this function is called what will happen this principal will get the value 5000 the period will get the value 7 and the rate we know that there is no any value for the rate so by default 0.15 will be taken okay so that is the 0.15 will, uh, will be taken as the rate so this is the default value and look at this case here this 5000 that is principal that is the amount is the function name and what 5000 will give to principal 5 to into period and instead of uh, float rate will be 0.12 that means we have already a point value 0.15 and it will be discarded it will be discarded and 0.12 will be selected okay so that means and one point important point to note is that the only the trailing arguments can have the default value that is the trailing arguments have the default values okay so this is the default uh, arguments that means uh, by default are already available values and if in case of some parameters in case of some values are absent this default values can be taken but it has the less priority than the our on uh, values or, or our on calling values okay now about now about the function overloading so we already know the term overloading means. Overloading means that something which refers to the use of the same thing for the different purpose. We have already learned about the operator overloading. In the operator overloading, for example, the star operator, it is used for the multiplication purpose as well as the pointer operation. So that is the overloading. And what does this function overloading mean? That means the function has multiple purpose and same function has multiple purpose that is the overloading and this is otherwise known as the function polymorphism in the object oriented programming that means uh, in c++ the function polymorphism means what the c++ permits overloading function this means that we can use the same function name to create function same function name okay you have to see here same function name to create functions that perform a variety of different tasks it means same function but we can perform variety or different tasks and this overloading of function is otherwise known as the function polymorphism. Okay and there will be uh, something that is by using the concepts of function overloading a family of functions with one function name different argument list in the function call. We already know what is this argument list and what is the function name. There will be one function name and different function calls or sorry different argument list will be there. So that is the basic idea about function overloading that is there will be the single function name but the argument list will be different. Here we can see an example that is the overloaded add function very important for your, uh, for your uh, exam point of view or interview skills that is what is this function overloading uh, with an example look add function okay this is the add function which handles the different type of data and add is the function name right and these are the parameters like in day in to be and here what will be this prototype one that is the add is the addition function add is the function used for adding and here there are two parameters like a b 
that means if we are calling like 5 10 see out that means we have to display add 5 10 what will happen this 5 will pass here 10 will pass here right but in another case like in a b c that means what add is the same function but here we are using the three three inputs right add is the same function but we are here we are using the same uh, what will uh, wait yeah add is a function but here we are using this uh, three types okay three data and what is and otherwise here int a b and sometimes we can we will use this double type of data that means the return type of the function may change instead of int we can write it as double add uh, double a double b otherwise int add int a int b otherwise int add int a int b int c otherwise double add double p double uh, q right so double r anything so the same thing that is the add is used but the arguments are changing as well as the data type is changing so this is the function declaration function calling during the function calling we will write c out and the function name is used here there is no need of the data type return type of the data type just the function name and the arguments which is used to pass 